You know I'm walking and talking with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 You know there's no harm to keep your mind. Stayed on Jesus. Whoa, there's no harm to keep your mind. Stayed on the Lord. I know there's no harm to keep your mind. Stayed. Stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 One more time. I woke up this morning with my mind. I don't know about you. Stayed on Jesus. Oh, I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on the Lord. I know I woke up this morning with my mind. Stayed on Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I can't talk for everybody, but I can talk for me. I woke up this morning with my mind, Sister Taylor, staying on the Lord. And not only that, I went to bed with it. I didn't just wake up with it. You know, I didn't just happen to pop up. But amen. Every day I thank God for one more day. And not that I'm as old as some folks, but I realize what the older folks used to say when they got old. They said, I just thank the Lord for what? One more day. And when you're young, you're not thinking about one more day. You're not thinking about one more day. I mean, hey, you know, like they expect it's going to happen. They deserve it to happen. And it's going to happen. It can't let it stop it from happening. But as you get older and your body becomes some feeble and things you used to do, you can't do what you used to do no more. You do like the old folks say, Lord, I thank you for one more day. And then they say, I thank the Lord for helping me to do what I couldn't do yesterday. So there are some things you've done today that you couldn't do yesterday. So I praise God for being an awesome God. We serve a great God. And God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. All right, let's get right into our lesson on tonight. We're still on, amen, God hid my future in my struggle. And we're going through the Joseph life journey. We, we were following the life of Joseph. And I tell you, this has been some experience. I heard Joseph, the life of Joseph, preached and taught many times. But as we go through this lesson, I'm learning a lot of things about God through Joseph that I had not seen or noticed before as long as I've been with the Lord. So I praise God for being able to yet learn from the word of God. Regardless of how saved you've been, this is one thing you can't graduate from. You know, where I read the word, you know, I read the whole, you have, you find people, and some people ask me this, they say, Pastor, have you read the whole Bible uh, uh, through and through, just straight through and through? I said, no, absolutely not. You haven't? I said, no, I have not. I said, have you done everything that you read in the Bible straight through? No, I, I, absolutely. So what difference does it make? It, the, the matter is, is that I'm getting God's word, and when I get to the portion of God's word, I'm learning how to live as I get to it. So you don't have to have read the whole Bible. Listen, folks that have read the whole Bible ain't going to heaven. <laughs> because you read the whole Bible, I read the whole Bible five times. And listen, you, I much rather have not read it one time and go to heaven and you read it five and you going to hell. What good is going to be? You set up in hell and you tell the neighbor, hey, at least I read it five. Amen. God bless you, God keep you. I, I just, you know, sometimes people get ignorant about the fact of they studying and, and what school they're articulated from. And I got my degrees and my theological degrees and I got them on the wall. Listen, when it comes to God, none of that stuff means nothing. Do you not know I'm not going to be saved because y'all call me pastor? <laughs> I'm not going to be saved. That, that, I know my pastor said, that's a whole, hello, somebody. There's a whole lot of folk with name pastor with the hell. Are going to hell. Deacons going to hell. Mothers, uh, uh, the mothers of the church wearing the big hats going to hell. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, yes, sir. Every title that's in church, you're going to find every title in church, somebody going to hell from every title. Preachers at the pulpit, deacons at 
every deacon boy, I don't care what label you got, ushers is going to hell. They usher all their life. You. Amen. And I, guess what? I'm not going to know any ushers with the hell. I did a part time usher. I'm not going. I'm not going to hell if any ushers going to heaven and God let it reveal it. I'm gonna see them there, but that's ushers going to hell. Yeah. First aiders. <laughs> going to hell. Hey, 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 amen. And I'm gonna get to y'all folks. Y'all say, I don't do anything. Y'all just two members. Y'all, y'all bitch members. Y'all, y'all don't have a title. You say, well, the Lord can't send me to hell for this and that. But yet, yet just a two member, they going to hell. Well, Lord, I didn't do anything. Maybe that's why you're going. <laughs> Hello. So I praise God that listen, only what we do for Christ is going to last, and we need to understand. That we need to be about our father's business. He said, work while it is day, for when night coming, no man can work. All right, all right. If anybody have been following me closely, y'all ought to know where I am, amen, on this, this coming week. Y'all ought to know where I am on this coming week. Somebody said, Pastor, y'all know where you are on this coming week. I know where I am. I know exactly where I am. Let's go to Psalms 37, 24. We, 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 I'm finally... Uh, getting away from the steps of a good man. Not that I'm really getting away from it, but we're still in the vein. Amen. The blood is still running. Psalms 37 and 24. And, and we're going to go back into uh, Genesis 37. So you can go on and mark Genesis 37 because we're going back to that on tonight. Not that we never left it, but these scriptures is not a diversion, but they are ways to show us how God is taking us through this life journey. Psalms 37 24, along this journey with our steps being ordered, directed, and orchestrated by the Lord is, is a real key verse here that we really need to talk about and get in on tonight. Psalms 37, 24. Everybody there? All right, Psalms 37, 24. Let's read it together. It says what? Read, read. Though he what? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. All right, now y'all often, many times, y'all heard me uh, uh, repeat and, 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 and read uh, uh, Jude 24 and 25. In, in Jude 24 and 25, when I said, listen, he keep what? Now to him that is able. able. He could say he would. Now unto him that is able to keep you what? From falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, power, both now and forever. But Psalms 37, 24 said, though he fall. All right. Now, I, I want us to understand something that when we look at falling, when we look at falling, look at someone and repeat these words after me. Find somebody to look at. When I say this sometimes, y'all y'all just, y'all look at me and y'all don't look at someone. Look at someone else. Look at them and I repeat after me. Said falling is not failure. It's important to remember and to understand to fall doesn't mean you fail. Hello, somebody. Because when when I talked about a few weeks ago about a newborn baby that's learning, that's learning to walk. A newborn baby cannot learn how to walk unless they what? You got to fall. You know why they got to fall? You got to fall because you have to know how to get up and to balance your steps. Hello, somebody. So, so we, you, you, you I, can't nobody hear that mama can't, can't, can't nobody hear tell me. Well, my baby start walking and never fail. I don't know nobody. Walk from the beginning and never fail. To learn how to walk is to fall because I got to know how to, because many babies, they walk from sofa to sofa and chair to chair and they'll stop over there and grab it because they don't want to fall. But it's when you in between the sofa and the chair, when you're in between watches and they fall before they get to the next spot to hold them up. Now they got to figure out, okay, they got to first say, in order to walk, after falling, you got to do what? Somebody real smart. If you fall, and the first thing to, to be able to walk, you got to do what? Get up. Get up. Look at somebody say, get up. Get up. Now, 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 now watch this. Many times, we'll say that God has allowed certain things to happen to us, and then we'll say, God has not helped me, and God has not sustained me. But guess what? God cannot help you walk. Uh-oh. Y'all better hear what I'm getting ready to say. 
God cannot help you walk, Sister Taylor, if you don't get up. I've heard folks say, well, I fell down and I fell down and, and God didn't help me. First of all, get up. Uh-oh. That brings us to an interesting point. What, and somebody said, well, where is God while I'm down? Well, the other part of the scripture read that, that, that he said the Lord, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. Now, in, in order for me to get ready to walk again, I need to get up. I Watch this. I need to make some effort. Huh? I need to make some effort. I need to put forth a will to get up. There are many people. I was talking to my wife and we was looking as we was driving down the freeway the other day, we came up on the street and, and we seen, watch this, we seen some homeless people. And, and matter of fact, this morning, and we, we seen the guy on the side of the freeway and, and uh, in the tent or whatever, and he had done something. He went back to the tent, I guess, where he, where he came out of. And lo and behold, while he was standing up on the side of the freeway at his tent, went into his pocket and pulled out a cell phone. Now, 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 come on now. Y'all help me. Y'all, somebody needs to help me. I, I don't know. But, but, but I, I, I mean, homeless people with cell phones. Somebody help me. Those things are not free. And, and the, go, the, go, well, the government ain't paying for everybody's phone. Everybody ain't got a government phone. And some of y'all working and got money to pay with a government phone. You need to give yours back. So all them folk ain't got no government phone. But at the same token, you what does it look like? You homeless sleeping under the bush. I see a light in the bush and a homeless person talking on the phone. Let, well, let me help you out some more. Everybody out there under the bush is not under the bush because they can't be in the house. There are just a lot of watchmen out, lazy people that don't want to pay no bills, they don't want to pay no more notes, they want to spend their money on anything they want except for paying rent, light, gas, and phone. So they said they concluded, I live under the bush. Let the rain run off my tent under my feet. I live on top of cardboard and a crate. I'm going to spend all my money, Deacon. Uh, I'm going to spend all my money the way I want it. So watch this. Everybody that look like they in a bad shape is not in a bad shape. And everybody that look like they need help don't need help. Though he fall. And what do you mean, though he fall? And if our steps are directed and ordered by the Lord, what's happening here is that when we find out God will allow you to fall to see if you got the strength and the ability and the will and said, I'm going to get back up from where I am. Because the Lord, we, we, we said that, but we really don't understand how truthful that really is. The Lord helped those who helped themselves. Listen, if I'm trying to get up, now watch this now. If I'm trying to get up and I literally don't have the strength to get up, Sister Jewel, he'll help me up. But listen, why does the Lord need to help me up if I can get up on my own? And I'm really not getting up on my own. The Lord has provided that strength for me to be able to get up. Sometimes we want God to do everything. So the servant said, though he fall, he shall not be what? Utterly what? What do you think that means? Utterly cast out. What do you think? He may fall, but he not be utterly cast out. What y'all think? Like down I may fall, but watch this. My fall was not intended for me to stay. I, I'm never falling with the intent to stay. God never will allow me to fall, Sister Cheryl, if he never intended for me to get back up. It's, it's in the falling, watch this now, there are many times in the falling that I saw God. And I didn't see God the same when I fell as I did when I was standing up. I'm going to tell y'all something. Sometimes God wants us to get a different picture of who he is and what he is in our life. And he will allow falling, which is not failure, in our life to show us, I'm just not your God when you're standing up on your feet. I'm your God when you're on your knees. All right. Hello, somebody. I'm your God when you're on your back. I'm, I'm, I'm your God when you... when. Paul said, when I'm weak, then am I strong. In other words, after I've done all that I could to stand, 
And sometimes I fall. God said, I'm there to pick you right back up. So God allows us circumstances in our lives for us to get to, for us to, for God to show us who he really is. Watch this. I really can't know that God is a healer if I never get sick. Hello? Watch this. Hello, believers. Well, watch it. Uh, 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 well, 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 God, uh, I was hungry and God fed me. You're not going to ever know. God will feed you when you get hungry. If you never get hungry. Well, guess what? God got a way of showing his believers how true it is. Watch this. God don't let you get hungry to starve you to death. He lets you get hungry. Watch this. The word. Watch the word. I've I, I read this so many times in all my life and not really gotten it until I'm now in my 60s. Come on now. He said, for I will supply all of your what? All right, put a period right there. If there is not a need in your life, then there's nothing for God to supply. Uh-oh, now watch this. So then, if God don't allow shortage to come, then how can he feel the need? If, if your tank is full of gas, you don't need any. And if you have food, you don't need any. If you're a quarter fool, you necessarily don't need it. But I tell you what, when it's at low fuel, when it's on E and it's tipping past E, you, you not that you, you, amen, it's letting you know you ain't out. But look at somebody said you're getting close. Well, guess what? God, <laughs> woo, sometimes God will let you run out. Somebody said, well, the Lord will fill, y'all don't believe the Lord will fill your tank. He can't fill it if it don't ever get yeah. empty. So the word, we read God's word, but we don't really understand. In most cases, the word has a, not just spiritual, but it has a literal meaning. And the Bible said it's first natural, and then, it is good. Yeah. then spiritual. So though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. In other words, uh, uh, Paul said that we believe that in, in, was that in Corinthians, persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not but the sword. So when we look at the word, it doesn't say that somebody may not hit me, and it doesn't say that I may not fall. What it tells me, God is not throwing in the towel when I fall because it's not utterly. In other words, I'm not going to be destroyed. Man, that knocked me down. Listen, God, God will let you get knocked down a whole lot of times. But he is the one that's more than enough that when you get knocked down. And listen, the getting knocked down is not to prove anything to God. It's to prove something to us. How do I know what God is to me? If everything stays all right. all right, if it stays the same, now watch it. Let's just tell the truth. None of us like change. None of us like to be in a state of want or need. Is that right? Come on, not just naturally human soul, just in our natural mind. I don't want to be in need. I'd rather not be in need. I'd rather not have enough than to be in need or not have nothing. Right. But guess what? I'm not in control of my life. God will allow you to go all the way down. And then God will pick you all the way back up again. God has done some things to me and I said, Lord, I thought you loved me. He said, I do. Why did the worst of the worst happen to me? Lord, did you see this happening? You know, the hardest thing is, it, <laughs> the, the, the hardest thing is, is to ask God, Lord, did you see that happening? And the Lord said, yep. Mm -hmm. And y'all know how you get angry and upset at your parents and your parents tell you, uh, uh, Mama, did you know that that was going to hurt? Yeah. Well, why did you watch? Did, did, did you watch me? Did you see me? I saw you. Well, why did you let me do it? Well, one reason I let you do it is because if I let it happen and you learn from it, you won't do it again yourself. Right. Y'all know what enablers are? And sometimes we're trying to be so careful and so protective of our children and those around us that we won't allow them to fall. Listen, 
God wants to show them, I can pick them up. Look at somebody say, stop picking them up. Your children need to fall, and they need to watch this, watch this, watch what needs to happen. Not only do our children need to fall, but they need to get down there where it ain't nobody around because we have told them before, God is a good God, and God will pick you up. Listen, God can never pick them up because you got yourself in the way. Look at somebody say, get out of the way of God and let it prove itself. There are many times folk that we love, that we care about, our children or whatever, we see them go down and we run into the rescue. You need to stop running to the rescue. God is trying to get their attention, but he can't get their attention because every time God gets ready to show up, you will show up. I don't care what nobody said. That's my baby. I raised my baby. And I'm not going to let my baby go. You done already told God, God, take care of my children. And God said, let me do it. As soon as God start taking stuff from them and look like they're going to fall, look like they're going to die, they do fall. You go over there and start crying. And better, God, help my children. Hold up. Which one do you want? Do you want me to help them? Or do you want to help them? We're going to have to hear them say sometime, just like God, watch this. Mama, can you help me? No. It's not that I can't. Mama, I need a loan. Watch this. You ain't got to lie. Mama, I, I need a loan. Do you, watch this, do you have a couple of thousand to give me? No, I don't. Watch this. Watch this, y'all. I didn't say, I didn't say I didn't have a couple of thousand. What did I say, Sister Taylor? I said, I don't have a couple of thousand to give you. I had a guy that challenged me one time, and he asked me for a loan. And, 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 and so uh, uh, I went into my wallet. I think it was $100, just simple 100 bucks. And I went into my wallet, and I opened it up, and there was $100 in there. Watching, he saw it. He looked into my wallet, and he saw it. And he said, he said, man, can you loan me $100? I said, no, I can't. That's right. He said, well, man, why can't you loan? $100. I just saw it in your wallet. You saw it in who? My wallet. Look at somebody said my wallet. my wallet. And I get to choose who takes out of my wallet. Now I didn't say I didn't have a hundred. I said I don't have a hundred to give who? Well, look at some watching. Folk are getting mad at you when they ask you for something. No, you got it. And said, Well, you got it. Why can't you give it to me? Because it's mine. Oh my. We need to stop. God is trying to sometimes show people an example and God is trying to help them and he can't help them because you're too busy trying to be Johnny on the spot. That's my friend. That's my this. That's my that. Long while you are gone and before, God is taking care of all of us. And whether you give me the hundred dollars that I need or not, God got another hundred somewhere else. And then God don't want me, you to give me the hundred. He want to get the hundred from somewhere else. And you won't let God do that because you're too busy trying to save somebody. Do y'all know how many people Jesus walked by that need to be healing, need to be healed, and he walked by? Uh-oh. Not only was everybody in Jerusalem the surrounding areas not healed because they're unbelievers, Everybody, Jesus wasn't trying to heal. Some folks just only want to come to church to get healed. So they do no sin. Uh, that preacher, that prophet, that preach, that whoever prayed for me, and I yet got my condition. Are you saved? And I'm going to tell y'all something about being saved. Do y'all not... Do not know that being saved don't mean that you don't, not, you don't have a condition in your body? Do y'all understand that? Look at somebody say, saved with a condition. <laughs> Woo! Hello, somebody. Tell somebody else, I'm saved with a condition. Yeah, guess what? The, the, listen, I can go to heaven with a condition, but I'd rather not, not be saved and go to hell with it. <laughs> Somebody said, well, I don't want to live like that. But I don't want to, I'd rather live like this and go to heaven and be with God than to, than to get healed and go to hell. Right. Amen. 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 
Now some some of y'all want, want the difference. Say, well, what well, well, let what the let the Lord give me, let it go heal me, give me a chance to change my mind. God already know you ain't gonna change your mind, devil. <laughs> you're a devil now, you're gonna stay a devil. God already know that. Folk lying to God, Lord, if you heal me. I'll do this. I'll do that. I promise to be at church every Wednesday night. I don't care pandemic, no pandemic, what kind of pandemic they call it. If it came from China, Russia, or whoever, Japan, I'll be at church. And as soon as you get healed, we don't never see you no more. I see you on the street, in the mall, in the bank, at funerals, drive by, but I don't see you at church no more. You done promised God a lot. The Bible said it's better for a man not to make a what? Not to make a what? No, it's better for a man not to make a vow than to make it and break it. Listen, I don't care what condition you get in, whatever you do, don't lie to God. Because God already know you lied, Sister Karen, you lied. God already know all you want to do is get about that bed and get about that trouble, pay that bill, fix that car, fix that roof, do that whatever. He already know you would say whatever you can. Listen, when we're talking to God, you ain't talking to me. God already know you lied, Brother Keon, from the beginning. Lord, if you do this, I'll serve you the rest of my day. The Lord know you lied. And guess what God will do? Sometimes God will do just what you ask. So that when you step before him in the end, let me show Keon the picture of him lying to me on March 24th, 2021. Said if I do this, he would do that. And, and watch it. The Lord is like the, like the cameras that take a picture of you when you run the red light and you do stuff and you lie and say somebody else was driving your car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the officer, they send you the bill and said, well, you driving your car on such and such a boulevard crossing such and such a lane and said, somebody else borrowed my car. And then he said, no, let me get, look at somebody said, I'm closer. You may have a twin, but it wasn't your twin that day. God is going to do the exact same thing. No, He's going to be able to show us, was this you? And do y'all not know, guess what? God said, he said he hate a liar. He said, a liar will tarry in my sight. Don't y'all know that there's going to be some folk standing before God? Not only will folk lie to you. But you're going to have some folk try to lie to God. I mean, the, some good liars. Yeah. Only problem about it, they lying to the one that already know everything. Amen. So he said, though you fall, you will not be utterly cast down. The enemy will make you believe because you fail, you, you fall and you fail. Right. And that's why a lot of people, when it comes to being saved and coming to God, especially a, a newborn's, They'll do things that's not right. And the devil will convince them to walk away from God. And they will say, well, you're not saved because you did that. You're not saved because you did that. If you were saved, you wouldn't have done that. Now, guess what? He was the one even in convincing and encouraged you to do what he's telling you to walk away from just to make you feel guilty. We have to understand and look at the fact that God is governing our steps. God knew that I would fall this day. And guess what? God knew that he would pick me up. Right. When others talk about you when you fall, and when others said because you've fallen, you failed. Hello, somebody. God said, no, that's not failure. You just fall. Look at someone say, I, a mistake won't send me to heaven. Hell. God already knew. I just asked for forgiveness. And not repeat that thing. Because repentance is turning what from? Not going back to. Then it says here, it said, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. Now watch this somebody. And here's a funny thing. I'm going to try to make it funny on this. Isn't it something that the Lord was holding your hand when you failed? Yeah. <laughs> How many times you was holding your children's hand. And you see some folk drag it up. They done fail. They, they never watch it. They never stop walking. They done fail. I mean down. And, and you look at them like they drag it. Don't they won't they stop and pick their child up? They, don't they're dragging. Yeah. Really get up. 
Do y'all not know? We got a funny God. God really just like us. They'll fall and you won't stop and God just keep dragging you. He said, for the Lord upholded him with his hand. It's like, Lord, did you see me fall? Yeah. Where were you? Did you feel somebody holding you? Watch it. I felt something. That was you holding me and I fell. Watch this. If God is holding my hand when I fall, he don't have to reach down. All they got to do is I know that don't make y'all feel good. It don't sound real good. Like I tell you, we got some kind of, but do y'all not that the word we've read this before. You've maybe heard it before and not really thought about that. But God is a comical kind of God. Lord, you mean you was holding, literally holding my hand. Why, why, if you was holding my hand, why did you let me fall? Wow. For he upholded him with his hand. We may fall down, but we're not cast down. We're not thrown down forever. So that's what it means, ugly cast down. I mean, it's not forever. And guess what? God will allow people to see you in a fallen state. They'll laugh. They'll make fun of you. And believe you or not, there's more people that don't like to see you up. They'd rather see you down. And when something, what they call negative, happened to you, they're laughing at you. Thought you were so sane. Thought you were so holy. Tom, speaker, holy, roller, prayer, preacher, teacher. You thought you was all of that. Look at you now. You know what? And God got the right one looking at me because God want to prove to you what he is to me. So God will let me look like getting the worst thing. And he'll, and he'll have the one watching you and laughing in your face. See you down, walk by, won't even try to help you up. See your car stop and drive away on the other side of the street, act like they never saw you. But God will allow people to see you in your worst of state. That's what Joseph was. Thrown in the pit. Huh? Sold twice. We get to that part. We, we listen. We haven't. We haven't even got to the worst part of Joseph's journey. Joseph is still, you know. But watch this. <laughs> God will allow you to get up, and then you get down again. It's like wait a minute, Lord. <laughs> wait a minute, Lord. I know we said this today, but this just coming in, come in hand, what I'm getting ready to say. God will sometimes use us like a yo-yo. <laughs> Don't nobody else know, but we know. <laughs> God will sometimes use us. It's like, and if you're real good with a yo-yo, if you're real good, you can make that thing walk to God and do all kinds. Of, I mean, make it stay down and move and walk and do all that stuff. And then make it come up when you get ready. That's the kind of God we got. It's like God got us attached. He's never really detached from us because he said if we abide in the vine. Wow. So if we are abiding in the vine, even though I fall and it looked like failure, and it looked like I'm not going to exist or survive, we are yet attached to the vine. Right. It's when we get separated from the vine that we die mm -hmm. and that we get shut off. When a baby gets separated from his mother from the umbilical cord, Without it being outside of the womb. Sometimes wrapping itself in the biblical cord. Suffocating itself. But we are attached to God. Just like a baby is to the biblical cord. That's my livelihood. Huh? That's my nourishment. That's my strength. That's my growth. Look at somebody and say, I'm attached to God. I am attached to God. Now watch this. God has... 
But uphold us with his right hand. He always has a hold on us. He never lets go. Now, here's the problem with this, is that it seems like, how many of y'all can really say, it seems there's many times in my life, it like God, not only was God around, let alone holding on to me. In other words, that time I have felt God hold me. It's like I didn't feel like I was being held. Anybody there? Anybody y'all been going through something? That it just, where was God? And, and it's like, you know, we, we can feel comfort sometimes, even if God don't answer, if we feel like God is near us. But there are times where it doesn't feel like God is near us in the midst of this falling. And it's like, Lord, where are you? But this scripture is letting us know he has never let go of you. Wow. Look what God does. He can hold our hand and yet be holding us, but yet it doesn't feel like he's holding us. And God doesn't give us any sign that he's visible or there. Now, what does the believer have to do? Remember I was talking about the weight room on Sunday? The, how, now, now I got to have what they call not faith. Huh? Now, faith is the substance of things. Hope for what? The evidence of what? Thing, not seen, not felt. So while I'm in a state of not being held or feel like I'm being held or touched, I got to know that God got his hand got on me. You better know it. Whether you call me or not, whether you come by, whether you check on me. Listen, stop getting upset at folks because they don't call you when you're sick or come by when you're sick. You said you trust in God, not people. He'll sometimes allow people to give you a call and come by your room. But if nobody shows up, Sister Taylor, you better know that God is forever present. Hello, y'all. Now, that's, now watch this. You don't believe you going to heaven if you don't believe God holding you when you're down. Now, watch this. I'm, I'm going to say something real funny right about now. How do we know that sometimes it's not God holding us? Uh-oh. Right. See, we blame everything on the devil. All right. We listen, I'm gonna tell y'all the devil is not guilty for a whole lot of stuff we blame on the devil. A whole lot of stuff happened to us is God allowed. Well, I feel like when I was down, somebody had their foot on me. <laughs> Woo! And really, who knows? Since you can't see the foot. Wouldn't it be amazing? For God to reveal, Lord, I know it ain't you. Devil, I rebuke you in the name of, I cast you out in the name of the black. Well, hold up. That ain't the devil, that's God. <laughs> oh, hold up. Lord, that was you with your foot on me. Listen, watch this, y'all. It, it, it doesn't matter. The importance of it doesn't matter whose foot is holding you down. It's who you believe in it already. Uh-oh. You know how there's some children when you get ready to beat them? And you, come on now, come on now. Y'all, some of us from the old school. Some children when you get ready to beat them, you got to literally put your foot. Put your foot down on them. Huh? Put your foot on them and beat them at the same time. Brother Keon is looking real straight. You must ain't got it like that. You need to get out your mama's house and come stay with one of us. We'll show you what it is. You ain't, you ain't too big, boy. You ain't too big. We'll, have, we'll hold you down. Some of y'all ran under the bed, thought you was going to get it under the bed. You ran under the bed and mama beat you while you was under the bed. They didn't get you out. It's why you was under the bed. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you're going to come out eventually. I'm going to be watching. I'm going to beat you till you come out. Ah. Uh, we just, we just don't understand. God got a strange way of dealing with us. And some of us, God got to hold his foot on us. <laughs> some of y'all like some of them bad children y'all saw coming up like you were. Right, come on now. Mama had to put her foot and hand on me while she was doing it at the same time. And then you had the nerve to say, how come you treat me like that and don't treat the other siblings like that? Because all the siblings don't need what you need. You have to be the toughest. But he upheld us, and he never let us go. 
Let me say this. God has a plan for each of our lives. And he knows the temperament of each of us. Some of us, it's is not, is not so much we're short-tempered. God just knows your temperament. God knows your ability and how much you can stand. And all of us can't stand the same thing. That's why we can really never say, I know what you're going through because our temperaments are different. Our ability to withstand certain things is not the same. Whereas some of us got a high tolerance. So God got to really turn the heat up on us seven times hot like they did the Hebrew boy. He got to turn the heat up seven times on you because three ain't enough. And some of us, we so, we so shallow, want to burn us up. But guess what? To each of us, it all feels the same, though. It's like, ooh. But guess what? God knows each of us. So therefore, when he takes us through a test, he know what we can stand. He know what you can stand. And God, and listen, look like God always takes us to the break, point break. Point break. It's like, if I get right there, I'm going to break. But even when we get to the point break, there's something about God that has a pendulum in our lives that yet allows us to swing when we thought we would have broken. How many have been to places where you thought you would have broken where you were? It looked like you was about to break, but you really didn't break, but you felt like you were breaking. But God put some elasticity in you. You start swinging and dangling when you thought you were broke. Guess what? You can't get to the elasticity point until you get to point break. <sighs> yeah, the Lord, the Lord got to take us to the point where we're going to break. And then the God said, now, I, watch it. The, as, the, the elasticity has been placed at point break. Not over here. Some of y'all crying about where you are. But you're not at point break yet. So you can't, you can't be like no yo-yo. You can't be like no rubber band and, and snap back. Look at somebody say, you haven't gotten to the snap back point. You, you, you're not at the snap back point. Now guess what? Watch this, y'all. If, if God knows what my elasticity is, any other place that I am, I could break. Y'all get that? I could break if I'm at any other point other than where God has allowed the elasticity in my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to tell you what, God can let us go a long time, can he? Yes. 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 Israel, Israel, when they was in bondage in Egypt, they, for 400 years, the Bible said they prayed. Mm -hmm. Listen, y'all, it said 400 years. Do you know how many lifetimes that is to us? Four hundred years they prayed for deliverance, and it said that the, uh, uh, prayers was going up and no answers was coming up. But watch this! But God was yet. Holy, holy, holy. Look, watch this! Look how great God was when they went through the wilderness. God allowed their clothes to grow with them. It said, it said they closed, it said they closed it well, right? right? Can you imagine Keon being a five-year-old and what and, and that shoe that you are at 15 stretched out? <laughs> it said God can call those things that be not as though they were. So guess what? Lord, don't you know this suit I got on is too tight? God said, don't worry about it. I caused the, the material in the fabric to stretch for you. And for 40 years, watch this, in their disobedient state, God fed them and allowed the clothes and the shoes to grow with them. And none of them never looked like they were about to die because they didn't have enough to eat. Look at God. But guess what? We believe that for them. 
The problem is we don't believe it. For us. Do you believe God can do that? For, see, we read the Bible, but it's not enough to read it. It's like I told the Lord, I said, now, 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 as, as Mother said on Sunday, you know, be careful what you ask the Lord for. But listen, I said, Lord, listen, I just don't want to read the Bible. I want it to be a reality to me. You, well, wait, I, 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 let me get this straight. Who, who oh, now, now, watch it, folks, now, now y'all been with me. If y'all ain't been listening all night, now y'all really give me to listen. <laughs> How many of you all? Want the word of God, God, to be a reality to you. Everybody got the hand. Dick it, walk. You ain't you put you I know the deacons better have your hand up. Now you gonna stop being a deacon that night. Now I see. So what are you saying? What that saying is, God will use you to show His word, huh? My mother said something. She forgot that she told the Lord. Listen, cause you forgot, God did. I forgot I told the Lord He could use my. Ah. <laughs> Now, fall, but you won't be able to cast down, for the Lord still got his hand on you. Guess what? Whether, whether you're afraid to say it or not, God is going to show the world who he is through your life. And our bodies is a part of the manifestations of God. Whether you like it or not, God going to use your vessel that you are in to prove to the world who he is. I don't want the Lord to prove that nobody did. You can't be a saint. You can't be a Christian. And don't worry about it. You are not going to heaven. Forget it. He's going to use your life to show the world what his word is saying. Now guess what? If God wasn't using us, why would he have us here? And if he didn't want to use us, the minute we got saved, we would die. Now guess what? Folk, do y'all not know folk wouldn't get saved if the minute you got watch it, let me tell you this. I'm gonna open up the altar tonight. And what I want to convince you is this. I want y'all to hear this one convincing word. Once you accepted the Lord, you're going to die right now. Don't y'all don't y'all know I already know that watch it. Watch it. I'm the pastor, right? I'm not getting saved tonight. When we speak it up literally now, come on, I don't care how holy and sanctified and you think you are and talk about, oh, I love God and all that kind of stuff. Listen, if we had told you when you first got saved, when, as soon as you accepted the Lord, you're going to die because the Lord will make sure you go as heaven. Guess what? Sister Jewel, I wouldn't have got saved that Friday night that I was 14 years old and I'm 62 now. Huh? Got saved at 14. Young man, I just want you to know. Now wait a minute, watch this. Now how the one that's telling me yet living if I got to die? But guess what? Had he told me that, you're going to die tonight. Man, I'm 14 years old. I haven't lived yet. Matter of fact, I told y'all a long time ago, I walked by the juke house and I seen them dancing. I want to, I want to become a juke. I, want, I wanted to go in there, Sister Henry, and turn it up. I, I wanted to do what I saw. I, I wanted to do what I saw them, saw them old folks in there doing the slow drag and the slow move. And I said, Ooh. I said, when I get old enough, I'm going to go in there. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> so I wasn't about to get saved at 14. You know, if I'm going to die, because I'm thinking, I, I, I done passed by that a lot of times. And I went in, I'm thinking, I want to at least get one shot. <laughs> Woo! But 
thank God that he didn't save us to kill us. He saved us to use us as what? An example. And that's why he says, though you fall, there'll be going to be some things we're going to look like we literally fall. And, and I said to you that was not in here before, falling is not failure. Falling, people will make you believe because you fall. You fall in you fail. Failure is not getting up. Failure is not getting up. If I fail, that means that I didn't get up, I didn't try, I didn't put forth an effort. And God can't help me if I don't put forth the effort. In other words, I got to show God I trust him. That's why when he lets me fall, then God already knows that I'm going to show him that I trust him because I'm going to make an effort. And along with me making that effort, God strengthens me because guess what? He already has my hand. You know how many times when I'm close to like, uh, y'all forget me, I didn't, I didn't get back to Genesis 37 tonight. Anyhow, we, we waited on her. Y'all y'all, y'all got y'all saved already so you're not going to die tonight. At least not for just salvation. So we ain't got to feel that. But listen, <laughs> since God already has our hand, yeah. I, I think it's important for us to remember is that in every facet of our life, you know how sometimes we say, I got to pray for God to come. If it's this scripture, Psalm 37, 23, 37, 24 said, he never let my hand go. Guess what? So even if I don't pray, right. he already has my hand. So when folks are in the hospital and, and, and they say, well, can you come and pray? Listen, do y'all not know the miracle is God is already there if he's there. Y'all didn't hear me. So Joel, God is already there. So in other words, I don't have to have tell God to touch somebody that if he already has me, he's already touched me. Oh my, oh my. See the woman, when Jesus passed by, touched the hem of his garment and, 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 and the virtue went out of him. Well, guess what? I don't have to touch no hem of no garments. He got me already. So regardless of where I'm at in my life, if I'm connected to the vine, yes, sir, brother. You all right. He already has me. Right. Yes, sir. So don't nobody come and tell me, give me a special prayer. I don't need no special prayer. Amen. The Lord already helped me. As I close, when we look at this lesson and look at this scripture, for some people, it's, it's impossible for them to believe it this way. But for you to understand, where is God in my life? He was holding me all the time. Watch this. Even when I thought, now I understand even more clearly. When God, he said, I'm married to the backslider. So God never let the backslider go. The backslider turned their ways, but God never loosed his hand. Isn't that something? The backside have turned away from God, but God said, I'm married to them. And if he's married to them, that means he's always there. Oh, All right, we, we thank God for another night. Uh, for Psalms 37, waking me up, letting me know my fallen is not failed. And that God lets me know that I'm not cast down or thrown away. I cannot perish. Watch this, you all. It didn't say that I can't suffer. It just says I will not perish. So don't mistake it. Not suffering would not perish. I'm not going to die from it. But I must suffer. So in order to reign with me, you must suffer persecution. So here we are at that suffering place on tonight. <laughs> you pray for me and I'll pray for you and together we're going to watch God change things. Lord, we thank you for your word again on tonight. Wow, tonight you have really shown us that you never 
let go. Yeah, thank you, Lord. You was always there. Yeah. We don't have to ever summon you to come. If you're already there, you're already here. All I need to do is trust. And what I already have is that God is already here by my side. Said that my hand, he's never let go. Oh, wow, God. Thank you for comfort tonight. Thank you for comfort in your word in knowing that you never let me go. Even though I don't always feel that you're holding me. Your presence, I'm not always feeling your presence, but when I feel it or not, by faith in your word says, you never let it go. Thank you, Lord, for never letting go. Now that one that is unsaved on tonight, we pray for them. That God, that they would get into your hands where they would understand that you are never letting them go either. If they confess with their mouth and believe in their heart, the Lord Jesus Christ who raised them, from the dead that they shall be saved with the mouth they confess and the heart they believe salvation from, shall come because you said I stand at the door and knock if any man open I'll come out to him and sup with him and he with me in Jesus name I pray for every woman girl and boy that they will accept your word just like you said it in Jesus name amen amen God bless you and God keep us our prayer tonight amen is there anyone um uh,